All set? Yeah. Why don't you come over here to get a little better view of what size you want on. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is from a, uh, a beef cow that was uh, taken out for us, so I can show you guys some of the things for the, uh, for the topics that we've been talking about. Okay, first of all, I had mentioned how tough the trachea was, and it doesn't matter whether it's in a cow, whether it's in a pig, or whether it's in a human. This is the trachea itself right here. Although this one's damaged, right here as you can see it's still intact over here and i did mention that when you're playing hockey if someone took a hockey stick or a puck actually into the neck i mean could this actually collapse you'll actually see when i hit it like that is pretty tough okay like even me hitting it that's my bowling hand and i better do it this way. like there's a lot of spring and bounce back does that mean it cannot collapse absolutely not it can a park uh, a puck not a park a puck going at, I don't know, give me an idea of velocity in a hockey rink. 80 to 100 kilometers an hour, hitting you with all the force in a small area, no doubt can actually collapse that thing. So if you actually go back here, the reason I asked for this thing to be so long, I wanted to, for you guys to see the vocal cords in the, uh, the cow itself. So remember I was telling you about the uh, vocal cords being two strings? That's actually them right there, where the sound is being generated. And the and cow, bumps, like yeah, these two guys right here, yeah. those two guys. So, you know, again, the, the cow can go moo or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> okay. so either or, that is it right there. What I usually like doing is filling this up with, uh, with air right in here, but if I do that now, it's just going to blow out here. So what I got to do is I'm going to have to bypass it, I'm going to have to shove my air into here, and I'm actually going to try to fill up these lungs. The biggest thing I'm going to try to show you is, how many blood vessels are actually in your lungs? As you saw from the surgery, you start doing any work on the lungs, that is nasty. Uh, there's so many blood ves vessels here, capillaries going through the lungs, that it's just that it's a tough thing to operate on. Do you see the shininess here on the, uh, on the lungs itself? Do um, you see the, the covering right here? Okay, what is that? Oh, that's the, the fancy thing. Yeah, what's the fancy thing? Plasma. Plasma. Starts with P. No, the Starts with P. Plasma. No, no. PL. Okay, yeah. Um, P-L-E. Oh. P-L-E-U-R-A. Pleura membrane. Pleura membrane, yes, thank you. Okay, so that itself is the pleura membrane that I've been talking about. And like I said, all the pictures don't do it justice until you actually see one. If you actually, anybody here want to just feel this, the, the pleura membrane? You can wash your hands afterwards. Come over here and feel the pleura membrane. You can tear it, but it's, it's, it's kind of ruptured right here. And if you get under here, you're like, you know, it's, it's a lot tougher than you think it is. Go ahead, feel it. No, not like that. <laughs> it's very oh, slippery. It's like dough. Well, no, really. Yeah. It's it's like no. It feels like dough. Like dough. How thick is it? It's really thin, but it's really yeah. tough. Like you can see here, it's been ruptured. And... I want to punch the tree. See right there? <laughs> I can tear it. Okay, I'm just going to try to tear it right here. It can be torn. It's just... So there's the pleural membrane right, right there. And again, that would be attached to the body cavity. So again, if I, as I told you before, anything that happens, anything that happens to a pleura, you're in trouble. Okay, now remember we were talking about lobes? Listen, listen. Remember we were talking about the lungs are a lobe and the human. How many lobes on the, on the right hand side? Three on the left? Two. 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 Okay. Cow as well, they have lobes. Um, how many they have is irrelevant not right now, but there's a lobe. You can see that's different, right? Okay. There's a lobe. What? There's a lobe right there. And over here, um, yeah, here's one. And there's one. So again, I'm, I don't know. I don't know enough about cows. <laughs> is, it, is it two and two or three and two or one or two and three or whatever? It really doesn't matter, but that is a lobe. Anything else I can show you here? We've been talking about blood vessels, and as we're going into the heart, we're going to be talking about blood vessels and arteries and arterioles. Um, you can see right there, that is a connective point right there. So to me, that looks like that is not an artery, that is just a, a vein of some sort. Where it's going, I can't really tell at this point. The, uh, let's see what we got here. This is all just connective tissue. I think the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to introduce some air into here, and I'm going to bring my air compressor over. Not my air compressor, my air tank. I filled this up with 140 pounds of pressure. Could you, somebody just get me a, a bag, uh, uh, a paper towel, please, because my hands are really slippery here.
time to inject some air. Let's just start with this little guy right here. Who, who knows where he goes? Let's see if we can... Okay, he was obviously going down there. Let's see if we can uh, inject some air. I imagine if I go here, we're just going to blow out a lot of blood. So here I got okay, to try to get a good seal here. So let me see what I can do. inflate in the whole bit so since I got this here I want to pull out and show you the uh, cow part. Feel free to get the poke. You know, and even this here you know that's what the sharpened end of the knife. That's not it. I'm not going to say it. Sharpened end of that knife is pretty good. Sorry, do you know Can be cut. There's a cross-sectional diameter if you want to take a look at the trachea itself. Um, really stiff. Flexible. Okay, let me just get the heart in here. Sorry, I'll sneak over here. set of lungs. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a set of lungs from a uh, pig. Yeah, there's a heart. Piece. Oh, and, and the heart's even actually still attached. Okay, okay, I didn't know that uh, I was going to get that as well. So the, the uh, this one looks a little more clean, looks intact. Let's see what these look like when they're inflated. So I'll come back over here. Human is even smaller than that one right there. 
um, just a tad, but uh, this is a cow heart. We're going to be talking about the chambers, and as we already dissected a fish and we dissected a frog, do you remember kind of the, the number of chambers in a, in a fish heart again? Two. Two. Two chambers, right? We had uh, an atrium and a, and a ventricle. And then when we went to the uh, frog, we had a three-chambered heart. And then you get to us, which four. is the best you're going to get. We got a four-chambered heart. Cows have the same thing. They got four chambers. And let's see here what I got here. Okay. The very top of the chambers, as we start going through the human heart, the tops have uh, something called atrium or atria. We have two of those. And then we have two chambers down below. They're called ventricles. The atria will pump their blood into the ventricles themselves. And between the atria and the ventricles, there are valves. And occasionally you hear someone who has to have uh, bypass, or not bypass surgery, somebody has to have uh, valve surgery on their heart because their valves are defective. I don't, you won't be able to make out where the valves are here, but you will be able to make out the chambers. And I think the easiest way, well, even if we look at it this way, this one's kind of ruined a little bit, but uh, you can definitely see the atria. There's the atria right there. That's the atria. And you notice it's kind of on an angle right there, so that's the atria. Okay. And uh, that would go into one of these larger chambers called the ventricle. Let me just try blowing a little air in there, see what happens. Why is everybody going? Yeah, and it's, uh, it's actually a room in there, so we're not going to be able to do much with it there. Let me just see if I can cut this. Again, I hardly call this a knife. Okay, there is a cow heart actually opened up. <clears throat> now, do you see this little division right here? Um, that was... That actually joined to the other part of the heart. See, the atria and the ventricle are actually separate on one part of the heart from the atria and ventricle on the other part of the heart. And in the very, the connective tissue between the two are called the septum. I'm not going to write that on the board, but it's S-E-P-T-U-M, -E -E and it's connective tissue between the two. Those two chambers have to be separate from the other two chambers. Do you know anyone who's ever been born with what they call a hole in the heart? Yeah, have you heard of it? Yeah, and it's actually what they're, when they're talking about that, they're saying that this division, this septum, which is supposed to separate these two chambers from these two chambers, has a, has a hole going through it. And if that actually happens, uh, the person will not be able to function properly. Sometimes it heals on its own if it's really small, and if it's really large, they actually have to go in surgically and they have to close the hole. You're saying, well, what's the big deal? You're never going to get the true mix of oxygen that you're supposed to have in your system if you have this leakage from one chamber to the other, so they're going to have to physically go in if it's too large and actually close it. And that actually is the septum division right there in the middle. So this larger chamber right here, that's the uh, ventricle. And again, the smaller one that I showed you right there, and you actually shove your finger in, but you know, the division right there coming out. That little spot right there, that was the atria, and right in there is a valve and that controls the blood from the atria into the ventricle itself. Kind of unique. Let me, uh, let me just grab this guy right here. This again is off. Why don't you use the one that isn't attached to it? Well, I really like this one. It's, uh, well, it's not bad, I guess. There's the, uh, again, there's the atria right there. And then there's the other one. There's the atria right there. Atria, atria. And then if you open it up, <clears throat> again, there's that, uh, Separation right there. Again, the septum, a lot of connective tissue. Um, just imagine, you know, again, working on a heart, um, trying to trying to get something like this uh, functional again. That's uh, that's not working properly. These are all again. There's a valve in there and a uh, valve over here as well, which again controls the amount of blood entering. And you know as well as I do that if uh, if you have a defective valve, they will come in and install an artificial valve, right? And, you know, I don't care what anyone puts in your body, there's nothing as good as what's in your human body already. So most of these, uh, either they have plastic valves and titanium ones and all kinds of other things. They gotta open you up, they gotta get to where the valves are, cut them in, put them in, and away we go. So, 
Here's how we used to quickly dissect this one here. This one. Again, you notice the close proximity of the heart to the lungs, as one would expect. One of these days, I'm going to buy a new knife. Because they should be now. They should be now, yes. Now. I, I bet there's some steak now. Ew, you don't want steak now. Oh, this one's pretty good, though. Okay, do you, do you know what you actually have here? These are the aorta. Oh. No, remember, um, occasionally you hear of someone who ruptures an aorta on their heart. That's what they're talking about right there. Like, notice the thickness of that. And uh, if that actually happens, the blood, again, is, is going to leave the aorta and fall to the rest of your body. If that breaks, your, blood does, your, your heart does not know that the aorta is ruptured. It just keeps pumping blood, and it'll actually fill up your entire chest cavity full of blood. Like, all the blood, instead of going through your system, just keeps emptying in your chest cavity. Like, that's pretty tough stuff. You know, and again, they talk about proper diet. Uh, what the last thing that you guys want is to eat crummy foods that deposit cholesterol all the way along the inside of that aorta and make it smaller, 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 right? And eventually, <coughs> the, blood, the heart keeps trying to pump. It can't pump the blood through. And then you end up getting a heart attack out of the deal because of you're, you're the diet you chose all life long. So it's very important that that actually stays open and unblocked. So we'll leave it with there, with that, and uh, we'll get to this next day. I hope you got something out of that. I should get it. So what do you get? <laughs>